Skydiving is a really interesting confront with fear, right? You go out the night before and you, you know, you take a drink with your friends and somebody says, yeah, we should go skydiving tomorrow. And you go, yeah, we'll go skydiving. And you go home by, you by yourself, you're like, mm. So then that night you're laying in your bed and you just keep, <laughs> and you're terrified, you keep imagining over and over again jumping out of an airplane and you can't figure out why you would do that. I'm about to jump out of an airplane with Tom Cruise. 15, 15 16, 000 000 feet. feet. Yeah, because we want a good free fall, a little time, a little time to think about things in the air. So you wake up the next day and you go, you know, down and you say where you were going to meet and everybody's there. So you get in the van and you don't know that your friends had the same night that you had because they're pretending like they didn't. They're like, yeah, man, my uncle's a Navy SEAL. And you know, this is going to be great. I've been looking forward to it. And your stomach is terrible. You can't eat and everything, but you don't want to be the only punk who doesn't jump out of this airplane. So you get onto the airplane and you go up, you go up, you go up, you go up to 14,000 feet and somebody opens the door. Terror, 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 right? And then people start going out of the airplane and you go, and the guy walks you up, your toes are on the edge and you're looking out down to death. It's falling through the sky. That's basically it's this. I mean, if you want to try it, if it's so easy, you can come help with me. Would you like to do it? I'll do it. Serious? Are you serious? I'll do it. I'll be honest, I'm terrified. This feels like a mistake. They say on three and he pushes you on two because people grab on three. And you fall out of the airplane, and in one second, you realize that it's the most blissful experience of your life. You're flying. The lesson for me was, why were you scared in your bed the night before? What do you need that fear for? Let me tell you what you need that fear for. It's for your self-preservation. It's saying, this is really dangerous, back off, don't do it. You say, don't be pathetic. It used to be dangerous, but now they use state-of-the-art equipment. Besides, how could anyone in their right mind not try it at least once, especially when A-list celebrities like Tom Cruise so enthusiastically endorse it? Don't knock it till you try it. It's safer than driving on the freeway. Tell that to the 727 people just in the US who have fallen to their deaths since 1993. That's my mom over there. Hello, very loving mom. You've done a lot for me in my life. Hope more that she'll help me with more of my life because I want to make it. <laughs> okay, we're going to make it. 18 year old Tyler Turner and his instructor, 25 year old Yong Kwan, were killed during a tandem jump. Well, in fact, there have been some 20 deaths at this uh, parachute center since it opened back in the 1980s. Do you have a bucket list? I'm building one. You ever want to skydive? I'm afraid of heights, but I do because I'm afraid of heights. And I feel like if I skydive, that's going to conquer every fear that I have, and I'll be able to do more things at a higher level. Do you want to try skydiving? I watched some videos where you know, they don't really work and people die, so I'm a little scared of that, but I'll do it. You gotta do some crazy things before you die, so why not? You have a bucket list. I'd like to go skydiving before I die. Well, you're gonna speed up the process if you go skydiving. You think so? Oh, yes, I heard of a girl in Northern California. She tried skydiving. She wasn't silly. She took an instructor with her, and when the parachute got twisted, her friends heard her screaming, and when her body hit the ground, they felt the ground shudder from 100 yards away. That's awful. If you went skydiving and your parachute got twisted, what would you think about for the last 20 seconds? It makes me a little emotional. I think about my kids. What would be your last thoughts? Thank you to my higher power, who's allowed me to have such an amazing experience and to go out in such an interesting way. I think it's a dream. You kind of hit the ground at 120 miles an hour. You're going to smash every bone in your body. Well, I'd hope for the best, maybe like... What do you mean hope for the best? There's no best. You know what you'd think about? You'd say, what a dummy I was. I'm giving up my life for what? An adrenaline rush? I'm going to hit the ground. I'm going to die a horrific death. And what am I giving up? I'm giving up my kids. I'm giving up my precious life. Because we want a good free fall, a little time, a little time to think about things in the air. Would you sell one of your eyes for a million dollars? Nope. Your eyes are precious to you, so how much more is your life worth? We go up in the helicopter and I'm just so excited. Like, I'm just such an adrenaline junkie, so I was so excited. Wasn't nervous at all. Everyone else was really nervous. The parachute was pulled, but I guess it took me 
a little bit to realize that something was going wrong. So yeah, tandem, yeah. I felt totally safe. There's two parachutes in the backpack and they both came out at the same time, which isn't meant to happen, got all tangled. And one of the cords actually wrapped around the instructor's neck and strangled him. So he was unconscious and that's why my head was pulled back because it got wrapped around my hair as well. Every time I'd ever thought I'd experienced fear before was literally nothing. I just remember thinking, you had no idea what fear meant until this second. Like I didn't know a feeling like this even existed. Thank you to my higher power who has allowed me to have such an amazing experience and to go out in such a interesting way. Horrible, horrible, horrible. I think that would be a pretty cool way to die. Why is it a cool way to die? Because you're flying, man, that's cool, you know? I didn't think it was possible to feel that much pain. I never for a second even thought that something would go wrong. A bucket list. I've always wanted to skydive. Didn't become a skydiver uh, certified. Was skydiving scary for you? Sometimes I was scared. I actually had line twist on my on my uh, second jump. Well, you believe in God? I do believe in God. Why do you think that fear is there? I mean, God's given it to you to say don't risk your precious life. <laughs> do you think there's an afterlife? Yeah, I do. Are you a Christian? Um, I'm a Catholic. The thrill of Flying, you know, actually is what did it for me. It's just like such an adrenaline rush. I loved it. When you die, are you absolutely sure you're saved? Sometimes I think I may have done so much that God wouldn't take me. I want to see you in heaven. I want to make sure. So I'm going to ask you one question to see how you do. It's going to guide me as to where we're going to go with this. Steve, do you think you're a good person? I do. I think I'm a pretty good person. You know, I try to go to my mass on Sundays and do kind deeds, but you know, I mess up there and there. If somebody gave an actual definition of what a good person is, I guess I, I wouldn't qualify. Let me give you the definition. I'm going to take you through the Ten Commandments. Oh, okay. Can yeah. you be honest? I'm not a good person. <laughs> so, so you've lied and stolen? Yes. Have you ever used God's name in vain? Yes. Have you done it as a Christian? Yes. Love your mum? Yes. Would you ever use her name as a cuss word? That is, you hit your thumb with a hammer, you want to express disgust, you might use the S word, or maybe you could use her name in its place. Would you do that with your mother's name? No. Why not? That seems disrespectful. You've taken the holy name of God, the godly Jews won't even speak or write down, yeah. because it's so holy and used in the place of human excrement. Yeah. That's called blasphemy, Steve, punishable by death in the Old Testament. It's so serious. Yep. Now Jesus said, if you look at a woman and lust for her, you commit adultery with her in your heart. When did you last look at pornography? Pretty recently. There are a lot of people who name the name of Christ, but they've never been truly sorry for their sins because they've never seen sin in its true light. They've never seen themselves worthy of damnation. They think they're good people. And it's only when you see yourself in truth that you can find a place of genuine sorrow before God, which produces true repentance. You're not a good person. You're like the rest of us. You've told me that you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, adulterer at heart. What if I go to confession like 10 minutes before I die? That won't help. It's like saying to a judge, I confess I committed the crime. The judge is going to say, good, got a confession out of you. You're going to jail. No, confession can't help you. Repentance can't help you. You know, repentance is like saying to a judge, I committed the crime. I'm sorry. I won't do it again. He's going to say, you should be sorry and you shouldn't do it again. No, you need something else to be saved from hell. Do you know what you need? What? So how can a man be saved? How can you escape the damnation of hell? What should you do? Repent. And what else? I'm not sure. If you died today, you'd go to hell. The Bible says all liars live their part in the lake of fire. 
no thief, no blasphemer, no adulterer will inherit God's kingdom. So you're in big trouble. Death is an appointment. Did you know that? It's appointed a man once to die and after this the judgment. And it's a fearful thing to fall into God's hands. So what can you do to be saved? Do you know? I don't know. I'm kind of scared now. I don't know what to do. Well, if you're in court and you're guilty and you've got no justification, you throw yourself on the mercy of the judge. And the Bible says God is rich in mercy and he provided a savior, Jesus on the cross. That's right. all you forgot. Christ died for our sins. We broke God's law, the Ten Commandments. Jesus paid the fine. That's what happened on the cross. Remember his last words? He said three words just before he dismissed his spirit. It is finished. Yeah, it is finished. In other words, the debt has been paid. We yes. broke God's law. Jesus paid the fine. Like in, if you're in court, you've got a stack of speeding fines. Judge can let you go if someone pays the fines. Even though you're guilty, he says, you're out of here, someone's paid these fines. We can do that which is legal and right and just. And even though you and I are guilty of serious crimes in the sight of God, worthy of death and damnation, Jesus came and paid the fine in his life's blood on that cross so that God could dismiss our case. He can legally take the death sentence off you, let you live forever, all because of the death and resurrection of the Savior. And all you have to do to find everlasting life is repent of your sins. That is, you confess and forsake them. You say, God, I've sinned against you. I've been looking with unlawful sexual desire. I've blasphemed your name. I've lied and stolen. God, please forgive me and turn from those sins and then trust in Jesus like you trust a parachute. So if you're gonna jump out of a plane 10,000 feet, what would be your motive to put on a parachute? My life. Yeah, fear of losing your life. In that sense, fear is your friend, not your enemy. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. It's driving you to the parachute. And you said you were scared. Well, that's understandable because what I've tried to do is put the fear of God in you. The Bible says the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. It's the beginning of wisdom. If you don't fear God, you haven't begun to be wise hoping that you'll see that fear as your friend, not your enemy. Just as fear drives you to put on a parachute, fear will drive you to the foot of the cross where you say, God, I'm a sinner, please forgive me, and you'll find everlasting life. So the Bible says, through the fear of the Lord, men depart from sin. If you don't fear God, you'll never depart from sin. But if you realize you've sinned against him and his anger is over you, you'll say, I need to get right with God. I need a savior. I need somebody who can wash away my sins. Is this making sense? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. So what I'm saying to you, Steve, is make your calling and election sure. Examine yourself and see if you're in the faith. And the only criteria biblically to know if you're in the faith is fruit. Jesus said, by their fruit shall you know them. Fruit of repentance, fruit of the Spirit, fruit of holiness, the fruit of righteousness. They're the fruits that should be evident. They're the fruits that should accompany salvation. So you're going to think about what we talked about today? Yes. I think... Uh not a coincidence that I ran into you right here because <laughs> I've been struggling so I haven't been to church haven't wanted to go haven't wanted to fellowship with other Christians I've just been just on my own I haven't prayed I haven't spent time with God I've just been distant when are you gonna repent and trust in Christ now can I pray with you sure are you sorry for your sins yes Father, I pray for Dominique. I thank you for his open heart and his honesty today. I pray that this day he'll truly repent, that he'll confess and forsake all his secret sins and the blood of Christ will be effective to wash him clean and cleanse him, all because of what Jesus did on the cross. So please grant him repentance to the acknowledging of the truth and make him a new creature, may he be born again with a new heart and new desires, all because of your kindness and your mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can I give you a couple of gifts? One is a book that I've written. Oh, yeah, sure. Okay. And uh, Gospel of John. That's a gift hey. for you. You're welcome. This is a nice cover you got here. It is a nice cover. Nice velvet. Do you think you'll read it? Oh, yeah, I'll read it. It's $100 million for you. Oh. You know what that is? It's the Gospel of John. Really? Yeah. That's cool. Steve, can I pray with you? Sure. Father, I pray for Steve that this day he'll find a place of genuine godly sorrow, true repentance, and he'll bring forth fruit worthy of repentance. And this day, know that he's passed from death to life because of your mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I gave Steve a copy of the Evidence Study Bible, wrote in the front, no Bible, no breakfast, no read, no feed. I also shared with him that wonderful saying, this book will keep me from sin, and sin will keep me from this book. It's the most blissful experience of your life. You're flying. Flying is what did it for me. It's just like such an adrenaline rush. 
I loved it. Because you're flying, man. That's cool. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell and make sure you don't miss the Living Waters podcast. The Evidence Study Bible contains fascinating information on Bible prophecy, the cults and different religions, atheism, apologetics, and biblical archaeology. It also contains hundreds of quality quotes, fascinating articles, amazing scientific facts in the Bible, and so much more. It even includes answers to 200 of the most commonly asked questions of the Christian faith. The Evidence Study Bible will thoroughly enrich your trust in God and in His precious Word. Get yours at livingwaters.com. Approaching a stranger is a little bit scary for most of us. That's why we've produced the Starter Kit. It contains four of our most popular gospel tracks. This is 101 of the world's funniest one-liners. These really are funny, and the gospel is hidden way inside. It's so easy to give out. You simply say, this is 101 of the world's funniest one-liners. It'll cheer up your day. This is the good person test. It's exactly what I say to people in comic form. And who can resist a comic? This is the Ten Commandments coin with a gospel on the back. I tossed a handful to teenagers once on a sidewalk and watched them fight over them. It's a great gift to give to anyone. And of course, our ever-popular million-dollar bill. Just say, did you get your million? And watch people's faces light up. There's a total of 350 tracks in the starter kit. Get yours today at livingwaters.com.